On Monday, May 7th, a number of Congress members, corporate leaders, and international politicians gathered at an upscale hotel in Washington, D.C. to attend the Congressional Hispanic Leadership Institute, or Chile's, 8th Annual Gala, where awards were presented to business and political figures. This year's recipients included AT&T Mobility CEO and President Ralph de la Vega, Republican Representative Thaddeus McCotter, and perhaps most notably, Honduran de facto President Porfirio Pepe Lobo. Chile's stated goal is to advance the Hispanic community's diversity of thought, placing an emphasis on private enterprise and hemispheric trade. Attendees of the $250 ticket gala applauded as announcers read the long list of corporate sponsors and contributors of the event, among them some of the largest U.S.-Spanish language media conglomerates like Univision and Telemundo. Univision! Ileana Rosleitenen, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and CHLI Vice Chairman Congressman Mario diaz Palart of Florida. I feel like I'm back in Miami. Why is that? A number of familiar faces from the far-right Cuban-American congressional bloc and lobby, with its base in southern Florida, are among those who sit on Chile's board, including Ileana Ross Leitinen, Marco Rubio, David Rivera, and the diaz Palart brothers. Chile's founder and chairman is former Republican Congressman Lincoln diaz Palart who introduced each of the award recipients as his close personal friends. Lincoln retired from Congress in 2011 and was replaced by his brother, Mario diaz Balart. A number of uh, like-minded members of Congress and business leaders came together eight years ago to fill a void, to form a Hispanic organization in the United States that's pro-international trade, pro-business, and pro-human rights. We never cease in our advocacy, in, our, in, in, in providing constant solidarity with those who fight dictatorship throughout our hemisphere in Cuba and Venezuela. We know that those freedom fighters, the, the heroes of today are the leaders of tomorrow. We never forget that. Much of the gala seemed to focus less on domestic issues facing Latino communities in the United States and more on regional international affairs, with a particular emphasis on promoting the regime of de facto Honduran president and Chile Leadership in International Relations Award recipient Pepe Lobo. The event was kicked off with the singing of the Honduran national anthem, and Honduran tourism advertisements were later screened during the dinner. Outside. Demonstrators protested Honduras' deplorable human rights record under Lobo's tenure as president. Hundreds of members of the country's popular resistance have been the targets of politically motivated assassinations since the coup, with the majority taking place under the Lobo administration. In the Bajuaguan region, the private security forces of wealthy landowner Miguel Facuse, a key financer of the coup, have murdered dozens of peasant farmers with the backing of the U.S.-trained Honduran military and police. More than 20 journalists have also been murdered, while death threats and attacks have become the norm for those who are critical of the government's policies, making Honduras one of the most dangerous countries in the world for journalists. A deadly prison fire that killed more than 350 inmates in February, the majority of whom were awaiting trial, has cast further doubts on the Lobo government's professed commitment to human rights, along with the assassinations of dozens of Honduran LGBT activists. Quiero ante ustedes reiterar que hemos superado la crisis política en Honduras y la democracia se mantiene firme y vibrante. Hasta aquellos que decían que había que ir por la ruta de las armas, hoy son parte de la juez, del ajuste electoral y van a participar en elecciones como corresponde. El pueblo es el que decide libremente en las urnas. Sanamos mucho las heridas y aprendimos que aparte del interés personal que podamos tener o político, todos somos parte de esa pequeña nación, pero con mucho orgullo. Y qué alegría ver aquí la bandera de Estados Unidos de América, la bandera de Honduras, dos pueblos que tienen una larga tradición de amistad. Adrian Pine is an assistant professor of anthropology at American University who has been researching violence in Honduras for 15 years. She participated in the demonstration held outside the gala. Pepe Lobo's theme has been unity and reconciliation. And 
all throughout his presidency, what we've seen instead is the plastering over of huge violence uh, carried out by the state. While Pepe talks about the inclusivity of his government and the fact that people who had been and still do consider themselves resistance are now running in the upcoming elections, that does not negate the fact that his military and his militarized police are killing people on a regular basis in defense of the people who finance the coup. When Pepe Lobo came into power because of the coup and through the coup. He came into power um, through illegitimate elections that were um, that were militarized, uh, human rights were suspended. There was torture that took place during the election day. There was fraud in the count. All of this was well documented, actually, by the Real News, and um, and so Pepe Lobo is a coup president and represents a politics that people like Ileana ross Leitinen are very in favor of. They were so worried that, um, that Manuel Celaya, the former president, was actually bringing Honduras down a road to socialism and, you know, and towards something like Chavez, or at least this is the worry that they talked about. I think more than a fear of socialism, what Congress people like Ileana ross Layton and really want is to, um, is to open up uh, countries for a, a complete exploitation of natural resources, complete capitalist exploitation of countries, whether they be Cuba or Honduras, um, to make sure that the, that the most profit possible can be made by corporations. And the entire world had not only abandoned the Anduran people, they were on the side of imposing a Marxist dictatorship. Wise leadership brought Honduras back into the international community after the people of Honduras had rallied in an admirable manner to defend its freedom from the imposition of totalitarianism from abroad. And by honoring President Lobo, the Congressional Hispanic Leadership Institute honors the people of Honduras. At the same time the Chile Award ceremony was taking place, the body of missing Honduran journalists, LGBT activists, and opposition candidate Eric Martinez was found north of the capital city of Tegucigalpa, having been strangled to death. Chile congressional members like Lincoln diaz Balart and Ileana ross Leitinen have been instrumental in backing first the coup regime of Roberto Micheletti and later the illegitimate elections carried out under the coup government that brought Pepe Lobo to power. On the domestic front, Chile's gala award recipient, Representative Thaddeus McCotter, has consistently voted yes on anti-immigration measures such as the construction of a U.S.-Mexico border fence, English-only legislation, support for the Border Vigilante Group The Minuteman Project, and seeking to require hospitals to report undocumented immigrants who seek medical care. It's not really about diversity of thought, and it has nothing to do with a with the Hispanic community. In reality, what Chile is pushing is a corporate agenda that is against human rights. It's against the 99%, which is meant to place the blame on poverty uh, for poverty on the poor and to pat each other on the back so that people like Pepe Lobo can go back to Honduras saying, I won an award by a Hispanic organization in the United States and you know, think that that's going to give him credibility back in Honduras. In March, 94 Congress members signed a letter calling for an end to U.S. military aid to Honduras, citing concerns over human rights abuses carried out under the Lobo government. This is David Doherty with The Real News Network.